guys, so it's Luke here at Simbox, and we're back with another interview, um, and I'm proud to announce this time it's with Liam Williams, and I'm glad to be joined on the line by Liam now. How are you doing, Liam? Yeah, very good, mate. Thank you. Fantastic. Hope you're well, too. I appreciate you giving me some of your time today to, get, to look back over your career and you know, get, get a, a feel for your future plans. Um, and I think the only real place to start is, you know, how are you holding up during this whole coronavirus situation? Yeah, so, like, you know, it's um, obviously a bit of a hard time for everybody and nobody can do too much or go anywhere, but uh, you have to make make the most of a, of a shitty time, you know, so just try and get on with it as much as you can. Yeah, definitely. Um, how are you... Have you found it yourself personally, you know, with, in terms of keeping fit or, you know, trying to keep on, on, on top of things so you don't, you know, go up too much in weight? Um, have you got anything lying, like in the position? Are you, are you doing things on a daily basis in terms of, like, little workouts and things? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's obviously difficult because, you know, gyms are not open and whatever. So, um, I'd say it's a bit, it's a bit shit, to be honest with you, but because I can't actually put myself in a position where I get a, a proper training regime, you know, yeah. So uh, I'm just taking each day as it comes, to be honest with you. And, like, just went for a nice long walk yesterday. Then last night, went, um, done a good run and stuff like that. So, get up this morning, just do some press-ups and sit-ups. And uh, it's just it's shit, really, isn't it? But what do you do? Yeah, so it's pretty much just back to basics, you know, kind of like uh, Rocky and Rocky Four when he just goes into the cardio and, and, and you know, the strength and conditioning kind of work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, um, it's like I've just um, just got myself some hand weights, just a little bit of shadow boxing, and oh, to be honest, it was driving me mad because <clears throat> I'm one of these people who I can't really stay still for five minutes, and you know, and if I know I can't go out and do something, even if I don't really want to, because I know I can't, it just makes me like oh, I just can't stay still, and I want to go and do things which I wouldn't normally even want to do it's just because I can't. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, there's, there's plenty of people out there that are, are in the same boat. You know, like you say, when you're told you can't do something, it makes you want to do it, even if usually you wouldn't want to do it anyway. Exactly. That's 100%. That's, that's me. Like, I just, I've been looking to buy new cars. I've been just wanting to just do, like, just mad shit that I don't normally want to do. <laughs> Yeah, so if we, you know, switch our attentions to your career, you know, we'll have a look um, over your career up until this point. Uh, if we go right back to the beginning, um, you made your debut back in 2011. Um, you took on a, a boxer by the name of Ryan Clark. Uh, can you take us through uh, how much of a, a, a proud moment that was for you to, to turn over um, as a professional boxer with <laughs> memories of your debut? Yes, yeah, so obviously, um, it's a big thing in there for everybody to be professional and... Um, it's like it's probably one of the most nerve wracking things I've ever done. Although I knew, like, realistically, I was always going to beat that guy, you know. Um, but the fact of being a pro and fighting with no no vest, no head guard, like just the whole at atmosphere of everything, you know. So um, that was very nerve wracking for me. But obviously, put on a good performance and um, come out come out, uh, you know, the other side and moving on to better things. Fantastic. So, you know, as you, as you continued then to build quite a, a winning streak, um, looking at your record, the first kind of blemish, if you like, you, know, you had a draw in your record in the early days back in 2013. You took on a tie and boot. You heard the yeah, boot. Um, what was your memories of that fight? And, you know, how do you feel you progressed and learned from, you know, your, your unblemished record as such uh, coming to an end? Yeah, well. You know, I, I was always, like, starting out, I was always, like, you know, a loss or anything on my record is, like, that's not what you want. But um, I used to think it was the end of the world. And now, like, it doesn't matter to me because a lot of sounds a bit silly. Like, the, the players that have gone on my record, they've actually made made for making me a better fighter, you know? Yeah. So, um, a, a I, just, box. I, I, look, I look at loads of them, I'm beating kids and think, like, you know, they protect their own and it's, don't get me wrong, it looks good, but it's not everything and you'd be surprised in many cases losing a fight or coming um, up against, you know, something which you would have hoped wouldn't have happened. You know, sometimes they make, for, they make you better. Yeah, definitely. That was something that I was going to touch on there. You know, many people do say, 
that you know you learn more from from a setback, whether that be a draw or a, or a loss on your record, than you do, you know, by being beating 10, 12, 15 journeymen in a row where you're not really testing yourself. Yeah, I say I, I like obviously when when you said about being tested, like I know somebody, I won't say any names, but I know somebody who was at one stage, I think he was like 15 or 16 and all, with he hadn't gone past four rounds. He hadn't even been scheduled to do any more than four rounds. Um, and for me, that's just, it's a no-go. Like, what's the what's the point of that? I think I only had three, maybe three, four rounders myself. Four, maybe, I don't know. Um, and, you know, you've got to keep pushing yourself and keep learning. So, what are you, what are you going to get out of beating, uh, winning four-round fights against Journeyman for nothing, you know? You're not, you're not progressing, you know? Yeah, definitely. I can, I can definitely agree with that, Liam. You know, you feel like if you was a, uh, if you was just sticking at something, and you weren't really testing yourself. You know, how how could you, you know, possibly hope to improve? Exactly, mate. Yeah, you need to keep pushing yourself, and obviously, um, you know, these, uh, you, you need these challenges to, to keep yourself motivated and keep, you know, keep you a bit nervous or keep firing badly, you know. Yeah, definitely, you know, and I think, you know, a bit off subject, but I think that's, it's, it's a really valuable point um, with boxing in general, you know, I think nowadays, um, protected and that, that all um, has, has took on a life of its own, you know, and a lot of people, like, uh, put it on Floyd Mayweather for the way he, you know, built and marketed himself on being undefeated, you know, and then there's, there's boxers that have come after him um, that, you know, m- might have avoided the biggest fights at the best times, you know, when certain boxers were in the prime, um, and then a lot of Boxes nowadays, like you say, they, they, they protect that all and they don't really step out of the comfort zone. Um, but that seems to be a, an issue with boxing in general. You know, if you look at the UFC, for example, you know, there's not very few. Yeah, yeah, the, the best has to fight the best, isn't it? Yep. And that, that's, that's, like, that's how I believe it should be because, like, you know, obviously, providing I win a world title next, which I believe I will, um, you know, after that, I don't want any steady fences. I want to. I want to look for big fights, you know. Definitely. Um, I want to be unifications, and you know, I, I'm not a believer about. It. I don't want steady takeovers. All right, you're gonna make good money doing that, but what's the point? I want to fucking challenge myself, you know. Definitely, definitely. I think it's that kind of attitude, Liam, that you know endears you to fans. You know, the the, the all action style, along with the the I'll fight anybody attitude that you clearly possess. You know, I think that's. Um, and did you to your current fans, and it, it, it's also you know winning you a lot of new fans as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. That's, that's I think I think they need to be you know not blowing smoke on their own ass, but I think more people need to be like me and take on the challenges and whatnot because people are just too too happy being in the comfort zone and fighting you know steady fights. Yeah, certainly. So if we, if we just switch our focus back to, you know, the, the looking back on your career um, and speaking of titles, you know, you picked up your first uh, title of note uh, back in 2014. You picked up the light middleweight or the super welterweight, depending on how you want to look at it, Commonwealth title. Um, yeah. You boxed Michael Lomax and picked up the TKO victory. Um, take us through the emotions of, of winning your first major title. <coughs> yeah, that was unbelievable. That's, that's one of the best. Um that's probably actually one of my best memories so far because obviously it was the first first title I won and whatever. So um, yeah, and, and I only won that I think after like I think it was a round of the ten fight mark. I'm not really sure was it. Yeah, around around that point. So like you know, for somebody to go and win a Commonwealth title in the ten fight, and then from the uh, a British title straight away as well. Just I think I was like twelve or thirteen fights to win a British title, so I'm I'm really happy with that, you know, and um obviously they're kind of my best memories to date because they're my first big titles I won, you know. Yeah, fantastic. You know, just looking at the record, you know, it was within uh, fourteen fights she was the the Commonwealth and British champion, you know, which again like you say is it's, it's a really good achievement, um and it set the foundations for obviously uh, progressing as as you did. Um so looking at the the British title win, um, which came right on the back of the Commonwealth title, you know, two fights in a row, you know, it's a fantastic achievement. Um, and you picked up the British title on the undercard of the Andy Lee Billy Joe Saunders fight in Manchester. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I remember. Um, obviously, I won. I won both of them. Both of them titles, British and Commonwealth, within I think it was four rounds. I done uh, Michael Lomax in two. 
No, was Michael Lomax in the first, I think? Uh, Michael Lomax. Uh... I think it was either in the first or second. I think it was the second, you know. In the first. But anyway. Sorry, I've just got, just got the details up there. Yeah, the Lomax right handed in the first round. Oh, first round, yeah. Yep. So I won the British and Commonwealth titles in, in three rounds, like in two separate fights. So um, that obviously very good, uh, you know, I was very happy with that. But, uh, you know, what I think a lot of people do these days is, is um, they dine out on their success a little bit. And that's, that's what I didn't do. I just kind of got back on the horse and kept pushing for more, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, looking up uh, the next biggest fight um, on your record, obviously you took the, the undefeated record of uh, Gary Cochran. Um, yeah. Again, another stoppage victory. Uh, do you feel at this point you were really developing, you know, your power and really setting your feet, planting your feet and, and, and letting go with some heavy shots? Because you were picking up a lot of stoppage victories around this time. Yeah, maybe so, you know, but I I actually get a little bit pissed off at myself when I look back because realistically, when I think about it, I should have stopped Gary Cochran in probably six rounds if I'd, u- if I'd used my nut a little bit and, you know, just gone about the job which I had to do. I would have beat him easily, but well, I beat him. easily, I stopped him anyway. But like, I let my emotions get the better of me. And again, although I won the fight, I I, I criticised myself a lot for that fight. But because of the bad, um, I took a lot of good from it because I learned, you know. Yeah, definitely. You know, and like you and, uh, mentioned earlier, you know, as long as you you're learning from the fights, you know, it can only be a positive. Exactly, mate. Yeah, you can only um. Obviously, as long as you can, as long as you can uh, take away the positives without without taking um, you know too many blows and whatever, you can you can get away with it and move on from it. And I think that's what I've done, you know. Definitely. So uh, the the next fight I want to stop at, um, and it's it's one you know I'm sure a lot of fans will be interested in getting your opinion, and it's it's one of these fights and one of these rivalries that you know really spiked interest in in both fighters' careers. Um, and it's of course the, the first fight with Liam Smith, uh, the interim WBO uh, super welterweight title. Uh, again, that was in Manchester. Uh, yeah. Can we start with, you know, where did the, the the kind of bad blood come from between you guys? You know, it, was, it seems to be quite a personal rivalry, and that, that obviously transcended into a, a a great rivalry and, and a pair of great fights. Yeah. To, to be honest, it was like I don't really know because. <laughs> Me and Liam, um, we we knew each other from way back, like years ago, because um, I went to Gallagher's gym uh, at the time. I was I was training with uh, Nathan Cleverley's dad. Yeah. Uh, then I was in the same camp, and we went there for some sparring. I done some rounds with um, with Liam, and I also done some rounds with Jose Burton. Nice. And um, and he was actually really good, and you know, we we, we got on. I actually felt like I got on best with Liam out of everyone in the gym. We we got quite friendly, you know. Um, and I, I I never forget he was always like he used to give me um a couple of recovery shakes and stuff like that after sessions and and we got on really well because I I feel like me and him are quite quite similar in um with our attitude and mentality, you know. Um, Interesting. So yeah, we we actually got on from what I remember. We got on really well and um, yeah. Good chat and whatever, and it just. But obviously, from there, people kind of. Um, it was the, the rivalry was built from other people, to be honest with you. Because obviously, everybody was talking about the fight for years, and um, then when I boxed Ronnie Heffron, um, I stopped him, and there was a lot. There was a lot of talk between him and Ronnie at one point, and then when I went and stopped Ronnie, like I was kind of. I was kind of the new kid in place to to take him on, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's interesting really, but it just, it just come kind of come from other people, and um. Obviously, Liam's Liam's quite fiery, just like myself. Uh, in the first fight, I sh- in the first build, I showed him too much, uh, too much respect because I just felt like him being a former world champion and you know having achieved good things, I he deserved respect, and I couldn't really. I didn't really want to be that that dickhead to disrespect him, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's certainly understandable, you know. It was um, I was actually at the Manchester Evening uh, News Arena that evening uh, as a fan, you know. I wasn't working in, in any kind of media capacity, 
um, and the atmosphere generated by you know your fans and and Smith fans, uh, considering you know it was a Welshman and a Scouser fighting in Manchester, you wouldn't have thought it. You know you would have thought you could have been in 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 the heart of Wales or in in in, in the middle of Liverpool, such as the uh, the rock and stuff. You know it was, it was a great atmosphere uh, throughout. Exactly, mate. Yeah, it was very good. Um, I always bring good fans. You know, um, everyone you know everyone comes up and falls to watch me and stuff and. Uh, yeah, it was it was a great night. Although, although I come out the, the wrong end, I did take a lot of um, a lot of credit from it, and you know it, it built for another good fight as well. Definitely. So if we just look at the ending of that first fight, you know, what what is your like, honest opinion on on the ending of the fight, and you know, is it is it any kind of like source of frustration for yourself the way you did conclude? Yeah, of course. Um, well, listen, I won't put you on the spot and and ask you how you feel about it, but I feel that. Um, everybody else knows, and so do I know that what should have happened in that fight, I should have won. Whether even even though it did go st- get stopped with a cut, um, I should have won anyway because it was a blatant headbutt. Um, but you know that's that's in the past. Now I I, I fully believe I should have won. Um, and I was given a bit of a boxing lesson. So, but it is what it is. As I say, I don't I don't really look too much back at the past. It's all good. It's all for good talking points, I suppose. But um, you know, I, I them them fights and me losing and whatever happened, um, it's made me into the fighter I am and, and the man I am now. Fantastic. So you know, as you said, the the, the, the clamor was there, the demand was there for the rematch, um, and we did get the rematch uh, later on in 2017. Um, you guys done it all over again, um, and this time it was a. Majority decision, you know, you know, one one scorecard for yourself, one for Liam, and then uh, Marcus McDonald had it level. Um, again, another razor, razor close fight. Um, <coughs> yeah, it was very close. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to go too deep into it because I don't really want to. Um, you know, I don't really want to give away the game, but basically, when, when I was training for that fight, I weren't I weren't motivated. I didn't a decent amount of money for the first one and stuff like that. Um, I I just weren't like it's a bit of a shit attitude to be totally honest with you, but I just weren't bothered. Um, I thought you know I've been there and I've got myself a big fight. I've lost. I've been paid. Um, you know whatever happens now happens, but um, obviously that's a crap attitude to have. And I weren't I weren't training the way I should have. I weren't dedicating myself. I was fucking three, three weeks before that fight. I was I was out like. On, on a mad one, I was like, I'm not even gonna say the shit I was getting up to, but anyway, I was I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been, and I just weren't weren't in a great place in terms of you know being motivated and stuff. Okay, so, so you know it's an interesting um, <coughs> from yourself. You know, do you look back on that with any sort of sense of regret? Do you feel like if you committed yourself to it 100%, do you feel like the you know considering that the, the condition that you was in. Um, in your own opinion, and you know, you pushed him to the, the the extreme in terms of how close the decision was. You know, do you think if you if you added that extra ten percent, um, you know, you might have been a, a convincing winner? Oh, a million percent. But um, you know what? When I look back, I actually I have no regrets because you know it was what it was at that time. I was where I was at that time, doing what I was doing. But um, I'm it sounds stupid, but I'm actually happy that. That these things happen because if if I'd scraped through that maybe one I might have gone on another fight, got beat doing what I was doing and then it could have been game over for me. Yeah. But, um, certainly an interesting way to look at things. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely at I, I wouldn't change a thing even if I'd go back because it's probably where I am now, you know. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, you know, you coming off that, that victory and it's a, it's a fight that won't have got the the, the, the universal claim um or the, the, the media attention as, as the Liam Smith fights, but immediately after that you, you boxed uh, Daryl Sharp. Um, Daryl Sharp, for you know the listeners that might not know who Daryl Sharp is, you know, he's a he's a tough journeyman. He works um he boxes out of Kieran Farrell's gym. Uh, we do a lot of work with Kieran as well. Um, but he's a tough, tough journeyman and the interesting fact is is that you're the only man that's ever stopped Daryl Sharp. Yeah. I've actually got another claim like that as well. I um I done uh or is it Dan Blackwell? Yeah, who's who's who actually become a good friend of mine afterwards because um obviously the connection with uh with his brother Nick and 
training with Gary Lockett and whatever else. So um, me, me and Dan actually become quite good friends. You know, we still speak every now and again. Um, and I stopped. He, I'm the only person to ever stop him in like 70 odd fights as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think you know little things like that. What people don't really notice, you know, to the naked eye or the untrained eye. Um, yeah, exactly. It's nice little moments to have uh, in your career to look back on because, like I say, Darryl Sharp is a notoriously tough man. You know, I've watched him uh, numerous times and against all different levels of opponents, and he knows how to survive. You know, and like I say, to to get the stoppage victory um, is quite impressive in and of itself. Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, he actually messaged me after the fight, and he was like, he just said like, basically, you fucking, he just said like, you scared me. I just fucking just didn't know what to do, you know, that kind of thing. But it's, you know, it's good. I don't take too much away from that because, you know, there's levels in it. But you know, respect to him, he's, he is a very tough man. Yeah, definitely. So um, if we move on from that, you know, we move further on in your career. Um, and this was a fight that I, c- I can look back on um, as a fan. And I remember thinking this is a really interesting fight, and uh, I'll be honest, it, it was a real pick and fight. Um, and this is the the Mark Efron fight. Uh, yeah. In 2018, uh, again another huge grill that you was a part of, um, and another it was almost like a, a crossroads fight at the time because you know Mark Efron had been built as as this undefeated prospect, you know, and he, he he was looking the part. He was he was you know knocking people out, and you'd suffered the the defeats to. To Liam Smith, and it was almost a you know a crossroads fight in a way. You know, like it would have been interesting to see where you would have gone if you'd lost to Mark Efron. But as it was, you know, you uh, you got the, the, the stoppage victory. You know, a brilliant stoppage victory. Um, yeah. But you know, a, a lot a lot of people fail to realise that I didn't need to take that fight. I asked for that fight because um, nobody would fight Mark Efron because he was obviously knocking everybody out and he was getting a bit avoided. Um, I was actually fight, supposed to fight a guy called uh, Jay Metcalf. Yep. In, in a defence of a British title, um, he pulled out with a ankle or Achilles injury or something like that. And um, so I just said, "Well, look, Mark Efron can't get an opponent. I haven't got an opponent. Stick us together. Fantastic. To see what he's made of, you know. And um, the, I remember him saying, they were like, really? Like, do you do you want to take that fight?' I said, "Fucking." Hundred percent. Let's do it. Yeah, definitely. You know, it really did capture the imagination. You know, and again, it was a fight that had a a lot of needle in the build up. You know, there was a lot of uh, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there was there was plenty of blood, bad blood. You know, that really intensified the build up, and you know, the sense of anticipation of the fight was growing. Um, you know, through press conferences and the weigh in, and then obviously ultimately waiting for the fourth, the first bell. Uh, yeah, exactly. and every and everybody wrote me off that fight. Um, I don't care what anybody says. I know full well. Even even Frank Warren brought me off, and and so did many other people. But you can't blame him because he was on a he was on a big roll, you know. Um, he was flying to be fair, and I, I just I had a point to prove, you know, and I weren't getting beat. Yeah, definitely. You know, as, as you you claim the win there, you know, you very emotional in the ring, you know, and it, it almost felt like you you were sticking two fingers up at the doubters, you know, and that you proved everyone wrong. Yeah, hundred percent. That's exactly what I was at. I remember when I won that fight, and I remember standing in the middle of the ring waiting for the announcement, and I just felt the, the tears behind my eyes. I was, I was just ready to bust out crying. And I thought, "Fucking, I'm fucking back." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, fantastic. This, this fucking, this go, let's get it done. Yeah, so of course that also picked you up the the British middleweight title, and this is something that I wanted to touch on there. You know. At what point did you decide you're know, you going to switch up your training? You're going to move up to to 100 pounds. Uh, can you take us through the the process of, of of both those things, the move up in weight and the change of training? Well, to be honest, the, the move up in weight simply come from from the F1 fight because I moved up to challenge him. Um, obviously, had a good win, and then just kind of like I was British champion at that weight. Um, opportunities were coming there, you know, so. I just thought I'm big, I'm big for light middle anyway. It's not easy for me to make. So, um, so I'm from there really. And I, I could still go back down to light middle now if I really wanted to, if I could have the right fight, you know. Um, but it's just like obviously my opportunities are coming at middle now. Definitely. And the, the change with Dom was like, I could see it coming for for quite a while to be honest with you because I was at the gym with Gary training on my own. Um, I'd done it. 
I don't want to sound harsh, but I do believe I had more more motivation to do better things myself than Gary did. Just just being totally honest. Um, and it was just one of them where I feel you know I, I weren't more I weren't dedicate myself probably live, properly living at home and training in Cardiff. I just needed the change. It was either it was either change or packing. Okay. Um, so when you did, you know, switch over to, to Domingo, you know, he's, he's a great trainer in his own right. Um, was it was the connection instant? Do you feel like, you know, he, he was revitalised as soon as you started working at the Ingle Gym, you know, surrounded by other great names, you know, Kid Galahad and, and Kel Brook and other fighters um, as part of that stable? Do you feel like that, you know, really out of Liam Williams? Yeah, 100%. I knew, um, I, remember, I remember going there one day and I'd done, and a bit of pads with Dom, and we was going up in other lines and all that kind of stuff. And a lot, to be totally honest with you, at the, at the start, I I feel like I was shit. Like it was, it was like a kid starting school over again. I didn't know what I was doing. Like it was all over the place. But instantly, I knew me and me and Dom had that. I think we had that connection between us. Not just not just a trainer and fighter. You know, I think we had that little something where we was both you know very motivated and. You know, you could see it. I want to learn as well. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and you know, the, during these training sessions with Dom, do you feel like you ever brought out a more aggressive side? You know, because during this time in your career and watching the fights that took place under the stewardship of Dom Ingle, you know, there seems to be an emergence of a, a darker, more aggressive style. You know, very family friendly, and uh, the results inside the ring was was showing that. You know, was that something you worked on, or do you think that was just like a natural progression as you were growing? Yes, it's not really. It's because I think that's purely down to me and my attitude because of you know the way I am. But to be honest with Dom, Dom makes me uh, box a lot more than rather than have that aggressive style because because I can box and you know I can outbox you quite easily. But I I enjoy having a bit of a tear up, you know. So um, and obviously the the, the last uh, the last two has been like. You know, there's been fights where I've, I've had to I've had to bring that aggressive style. So, um, you know, when the right when the the right fight comes, you see you see a proper good boxing display, which I can do. You know, but it's just when the time is right. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I think the one thing that was is, is clearly evident is that the better the opponent, the more you bring out of yourself. You know, and, and it makes it really intriguing to think just how far is this going to go for Liam Williams? You know, because if we look at the most recent fight, you know, he, he knocked out uh, Alantes Fox in the fifth round um, back in the 2019. Um, and on paper, that was a, you know, it was almost a 50-50 fight. You know, you had a lot of people that was was uh, fans of Fox, you know, and, and, and hyping him up. He um, had a, a good record before. And, uh, but when you guys were in the ring, it was it was almost like a, a, a man against a boy, if you like, you know. And as, as although he had, the, you know, physical attributes, he was bigger than yourself, you know, longer reach. Um, they didn't really play a part in the fight. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I just, that's what I mean. But you know, I wanted to challenge myself. And when I got against these fighters, where people doubt me against, I believe you see the better of me because, you know, I'm, I just bring better on myself in the gym as well. And um, obviously, I feel I got a point to prove. So I do think the better opponent, you, you keep seeing the best for me. You know. Definitely. So you know, there's like kind of your career boxed off. If we could just switch to, you know, some potential opponents, if you like, you know, future plans. Um, I think the most obvious point to begin with is um, at the BBO uh, middleweight title shot with Demetrius Andre, um, the American undefeated champion. Um, I think that was, you know, very close to, to coming to fruition um, before the whole lockdown situation. Um, what's your, yeah. your thoughts on that fight and, and uh, Andre as, a, as an opponent? Yeah, that fight was actually it was due to get made like a, the day of this lockdown or the day after or whatever, and it just kind of all got put to a bit of a halt. But still, my position lays exactly the same with the WPO, but obviously just things are, are postponed a little bit, you know. So um, it's just a case of of when it happens now. But I can't wait. I'm, I'm busting for the fight. I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna smash him rather. Do you think this is, you know, like you, you, your aggression um, towards uh, Andrade as, a, as an opponent? Do you believe that's because it's your ambition 
um, to, to get that world title? Or is he like a, a, a personal beef there, if you like, with uh, Andrade as, as a person? No, definitely not. Um, you know, he's, he's probably a good guy. You know, I don't I didn't know him. I don't know enough about him, but this is purely my own ambition, which is driving me, you know, and, um, you know, you, you have to, there's no friends in this game, is there? It's, uh, it's doggy dog, like, you just have to just blast anyone out of the way who's in front of you. Definitely. So, um, another, you know, opponent that I'd like to get your opinion on, um, you know, I think there was times last year, um, you know, when you was very vocal and, and you know, looking for a high-profile fight, it almost came like you was, you was the most avoided fighter in the, in the middleweight division for a time. Um, and I'd like to get your opinion on a possible fight with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. I'd love it. Um, it's one, just one I've called for for a while. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna go chasing him, base my career, fucking, you know, chasing him around. But if he wants to fight, that I'd love it. And I think, I think the fans would be the real winners there. Definitely, you know, I think it was a, it was a, a Simbox uh, discussion earlier on in the year where we, we were talking about our, our must see fights for 2020, and you know, a lot of the fights were looking at Crawford and Spence and. Um, and Joshua against John Tim Wilder or Tyson Fury. Um, but my personal choice, you know, it's quite ironic that we're having this conversation. Now, my personal choice was a Liam Williams Chris Eubank fight. I just think it's an absolute war in, in, in every sense of the word. Yeah, I'm representing the uh, massive winner. And uh, I think it'd be a pretty interesting build up as well because I'd like to give it to him, you know. He thinks, he thinks he's a bit of a. He thinks he's a smart man, but he's just, he's just a fool. I'd put his own man in his place as well. Brilliant. Is it, is, has there ever been any kind of like formal discussions for a fight like that to take place, or is it just kind of like a, you know, in interviews and stuff like that? Yeah, it's just interviews and stuff. There's never really been any anything uh, on paper which is meant to be done or anything, but no, it's, it's definitely one I'd love to take if, if the opportunity comes. Fantastic. So, you know, this was a, a question that I would like to ask, you know, and it's, it's quite a difficult uh, question to ask because obviously he's still an active boxer. Um, but how do you feel you sit, you know, in, in the history of Welsh boxing? You know, it's, it's, it's a proud boxing country, you know, with Carl Zaga and, and others. Um, you Obviously, you're a two-weight British champion. You picked up the Commonwealth title as well, and you're on the cusp of a world title fight. You know, do you ever sit back and look and, and think of how much you've actually achieved up until this point um, and, and where that places you in the history of, British, uh, of Welsh boxing? Yeah, um, it's, as you said, it's a bit of a difficult one, really. But obviously, because I wouldn't want to disrespect any other guys, and you know, respect them all. But um, I believe I, I would be, I believe I would be in in terms of recent years. Anybody that I would know in my time, anyway, um, I would say I, I certainly come within the top handful, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, got Carl Dragi, which is you know, he's he's the man, and he's number one. Let's be honest. Um, you got him. You got like some cleverly, um, Selby. Yeah. Mm, what are what are the champions there? What has there been? Um, in recent times, you got people like uh, Barry Jones. You know, he, um, a great professional. Yeah, but I mean, like Barry was kind of. I know not much, but I never actually even watched Barry. I never really. I mean, just kind of like people who, who I've seen and I've watched, like, so it'd probably be like. Joe, Cleverly, Selby, really. Yeah, um, you know, th- those are the three prominent of the recent areas, yeah, you know. The yeah, world so I'm, I'm, def- I'm definitely amongst, you know, I'm definitely up there about to my near enough now once once I get my title chance now and I believe I win. I'm definitely up there, you know, in top three. Fantastic, you know, so um, we have a little segment, you know, at the end of our, our interviews uh, that we're trying to incorporate at the minute, so it's just five rapid-fire questions. Um you know, it just takes one or two words to answer. So if I fire off these questions, and then you can answer them as you see fit. Uh, yeah. So the first one, uh, who do you consider to be the biggest inspiration for your career? Joe Calzaghi. Looking back on your career, which is your favourite win? Not necessarily your most high profile, but your favourite personal win of your career. Mm. Uh, Chris Carlsdott. Fantastic. Uh, who would you consider to be your ideal opponent if you could make any fight for tomorrow? Gennady Golfkin. Who's your favourite all-time boxer? Oof, difficult one, huh? 